Broly has been a character that everybody has wanted to see make a return in Dragon Ball Super ever since he and Goku parted ways on Planet Vampa. With how the story played out during the Moro arc, there was never really a proper time to bring Broly back, but now that we're in the midst of the Granola arc, is it possible for Broly to make a return? Let's talk all about it right now. How's it going everyone, Innovative JDog here, and welcome back to yet another Dragon Ball Super speculation video. Today's topic revolves around none other than a character that everybody wanted to see pop up during the Moro arc, but he never did. Broly was introduced to the canonical story of Dragon Ball through the 2018 movie appropriately titled Dragon Ball Super Broly, and although that was fairly recent, fans are already clamoring to see more of this new take on the character. So I figured I'd come up with a logical scenario where Broly could be brought back into the Granola arc, and I'd also like to talk about how significant he actually is to the underlying themes of this new story. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button to help push this video into YouTube's algorithm. The more likes this video has, the more likely it is that more people like yourself will see this video. Also, if you're a huge fan of Dragon Ball content, you'll definitely want to click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Also, keep in mind that there will be spoilers for Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 68 within this video, so if you aren't caught up, go read that chapter, check out my review for it, and then come back to this video. With all of that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Alright, so let's start things off by answering the question, why? Why would Broly be brought into this arc at all, especially after being completely absent from the previous one, which, for the record, ties directly into the current arc? Well, there's quite a few different answers to this question, so I'll start off by answering them one by one. First off, it's no secret that the Granola arc is going to revolve heavily around the Saiyans and how Granola perceives them after being the lone survivor of their genocidal attack on his people. Because his species, the Cerulians, were all wiped out by the Saiyans who were working under Frieza at the time, Granola has had this lifelong vendetta against the Frieza force and now, the time has finally come for him to take his revenge. The reason why he never enacted this revenge plan before was because he thought that the Saiyans were all wiped out, and he also believed that Frieza had been killed, which he explains to Oatmeal during Chapter 68. However, in the very same chapter after delivering the body of 7-3 to an extremely rich and powerful intel group known as the Heaters, Granola discovers that Frieza has actually been revived, which sparks a new desire for him to get stronger so that he can kill the tyrant once and for all. We can assume that this plan for vengeance means very much to him and he'll go to whatever lengths necessary to kill Frieza with his own bare hands. It doesn't matter who or what gets in his way, and maybe it doesn't even matter who he teams up with. Maybe that's a topic for another day. Now, take into consideration Granola just barely discovered that Frieza had been revived, meaning he has next to no information regarding where he is, what he's done ever since he was brought back, and how many people he's recruited onto his side. Granola knows that he can't rush into the situation without getting stronger, because he knows that Frieza has gotten much more powerful as well. It would be suicide to confront him in his current state. So, it's safe to assume that over the course of this arc, Granola will be dedicating his time to getting stronger, and he'll want to start gathering every piece of information that he can in an effort to locate Frieza, putting together this big huge puzzle of evidence so that he can launch his grand attack. But how would Granola go about obtaining information on Frieza? The answer is quite obvious, and of course, he'd be working very closely with the Heaters group, who would reward him with intel regarding Frieza's whereabouts and where his forces have been over time. As seen in Chapter 68, we already know that Elec, the leader of the Heaters gang, fears that Granola will become too powerful and will eventually become a threat to his group, his family so he reveals to the audience that he plans on having Frieza eliminate Granola for him, so it only makes sense that he'd help lead Granola into a trap. I could definitely see Elec eventually finding out where Frieza's army had been, and as a result, he'd give Granola those locations, so that he could track down these different coordinates and use them to eventually locate Frieza's army. You see where I'm going with this? 
The only logical way for Broly to be brought into the Granola arc would be for Granola to find him first when on this adventure, because I think it would be pretty boring if Goku just randomly popped up and brought Broly into the final battle with next to no context, which a lot of people wanted to have happen during the Moro arc. Instead of that happening, it would be insanely interesting if Granola gathered all of this intel about the Frieza Force and where they had been and using this information, he found himself on a distant planetoid named Vampa, because after all, that's where Chi-Lai and Lemo had landed looking for new recruits. Granola would stumble upon Broly purely by chance, and in his effort of locating Frieza, he would discover that there was a lone Saiyan left alive on this desolate planet. He would learn through Broly that the Saiyans hadn't fully died off, and this would spark yet another desire to enact vengeance on not just Frieza, but on the surviving Saiyans as well. Now, the story could drastically change depending on if Granola would be strong enough at this point to take on Broly, and whether or not Broly would be able to willingly tap into his Ikari state or Super Saiyan forms. We don't even know enough about Granola yet to know whether or not he'd attack Broly and his friends on the spot, but regardless, he'd now know that the Saiyans were still alive. Thus, after leaving Vampa and subsequently bringing Broly into this story, Granola would be able to put two and two together, learning that Broly was actually part of the Frieza Force at one point, and that they all traveled to Earth where the other remaining Saiyans resided. Because he was introduced to Broly, and the idea that the Saiyans were still left alive, Granola would have a logical reasoning behind his visitation to Earth, and he'd then come into contact with Goku, Vegeta, and potentially their sons and daughters. Thus, that answers the question posed towards the beginning of the video. Why? Broly should definitely be involved in this story in some shape or form because of his ties to Saiyan history, the Saiyans on Earth, and his short time with the Frieza Force. He'd be the most likely target for Granola to encounter at some point in this story because everything just lines up so perfectly and he's the perfect middleman for all of these connecting plot points. He is connected to everything that Granola wants. But not only that, Chapter 68 left off with the idea that the strongest warrior in Universe 7 will soon rise up. It's implied that this warrior will be Granola, considering he plans on training to get stronger to take on Frieza. But if that's the case, he's got to work pretty hard to become stronger than some characters that we already know about. I mean, there's already Frieza, who has most likely gotten stronger since we last saw him in DBS Broly, then there's Goku, who has gotten a much better handling of Ultra Instinct, and he's well on his way of tapping into stronger forms of angelic power, and not to mention, we were teased that Vegeta was going to obtain a newfound power similar to the Gods of Destruction. I made an entire video discussing the concept of Vegeta obtaining a new power just the other day, so if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out, it's a really good discussion. But already, the three main people that Granola's gonna want to take his revenge out on, they're already super strong and are some of the strongest warriors in the entire universe. So, there's gonna be quite some competition for him to match the three of them, which he'll most likely do at some point since he is the main antagonist of this arc, but there's someone that I forgot to mention. If Broly is brought into this arc through that storyline that I just talked about, he's also in the running for becoming the universe's strongest warrior. I mean, you remember how powerful he got in DBS Broly, don't you? He went from being weaker to Super Saiyan Vegeta, to being able to fight on par with Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. That is immensely powerful, and his potential is absurdly high because he made such a huge leap within a short period of time. If he's brought back into this arc, he'd be the fifth candidate for this big competition for becoming the universe's strongest warrior, and not to mention, we don't know if he's gotten stronger since his encounter with Goku. We don't know if Goku has gone back to train with him from time to time between these past few arcs. So, all in all, I just feel like it would be a huge waste not to include Broly in this story arc, because he'd be such the perfect catalyst for bringing all of these different plot points together. His involvement with the Saiyans ties in perfectly with Granola's vengeance, and he would be able to introduce him to the fact that there are more Saiyans still out there. On top of this, he'd unknowingly help lead Granola down a path towards locating Frieza to fulfill that other portion of his vengeance, and then he'd also tie into the additional subplot to this arc where the strongest warrior of the universe will emerge, and it could possibly be Broly. Is it just me? I'm certain that after explaining all of that, you have to agree with me that Broly needs to meet Granola during this arc. This would be such an intriguing way to get the plot moving, and in my eyes, it just makes way too much sense for it to happen. But in the end, that's just my speculation. 
What are your thoughts on the possibility of Granola meeting Broly? Do you think it's likely, unlikely, or do you think it absolutely needs to happen like I do? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below and let's have a discussion. I had a lot of fun making this video because, truth be told, I absolutely love speculating the future of Dragon Ball, and when I come up with an idea that actually makes sense, I want to see it happen so badly, but we'll all just have to wait and see how this arc progresses within the next few chapters. With that being said, if you enjoyed today's video and liked my idea of bringing Broly back into the story, go ahead and click that thumbs up button to help push this video into YouTube's algorithm. Remember, the more likes this video has, the more people will see it, so please, let's make it so a ton of fans have the opportunity to watch this video. Also, if you haven't done it already, and if you love Dragon Ball content and want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can see whenever I upload a new video. I make a ton of content ranging from discussions, reviews, speculation videos, and I even do what if videos from time to time. So if all of that interests you, you'll definitely want to subscribe. As always, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until my next video, I'll be seeing all of you Dragon Ball fans later. See ya!